Welcome to the introduction of the new NEO photoionization detector from WatchGas. The NEO comes in four different variants available in ranges from 0.01 to 5000 ppm, 0.01 to 15000 ppm, 1 ppb to 15000 ppm, 0.05 to 10,000 ppm VOC and 0.05 to 200 ppm benzene specific measurements. Here we have to have the 0.01 to 15,000 ppm variant of the NEO. There are a variety of photoionization detectors available on the market, available for detecting volatile organic compounds. So to begin with the operation, we can turn the instrument on, single button press, pressing and holding for three seconds. This will go through the startup operation and warm up the instrument. As we can see, the NEO includes a wireless Bluetooth low power transmitter, which means you can see data directly on your mobile phone if running an Android operating system. Uh, you can also preset any parameters, see live data or download data logs. So as we can see, the unit has started up and we can see we're getting a reading of 0.57 ppm. So this gives us an extra layer of sensitivity against a standard photoionization detector. And we can see we have the Bluetooth symbol to let us know that we are able to connect to a phone via Bluetooth, that the pump's in operational, that everything's okay. We do also have the option for motion sensitivity. So we can put in a man down alarm as part of the operation of the unit if we so wish. We can see the current temperature of the unit and that we're setting to read isobutylene units. If we want to, we can scroll through any of the measurement criteria, including TWAs and STELs and peaks, uh, the time and date, temperature, the calibration date, the last time it was calibrated, the calibration gas and the correction factors, what wireless type is within the unit. We can also then enter PC communications for a direct connection. The unit itself communicates with the computer via micro USB. This is also the method by which we can uh, charge the instrument. We can see this is an ATEX version of the instrument. We have an exhaust port on the side of the instrument for everything that enters through the front of the instrument is exhausted out the side. So you can use it for taking Tedlar bag samples for future analysis at a laboratory should you so wish. So to get into the, some of the back menus, we press and hold the top and bottom buttons at the same time. This will invite us to a insert password. The password as standard is 0, 0, 0, 0. We can now go into the calibration so we have an ability to use a span and calibrate, uh, zero calibrate the instrument. We can look at any measurement criteria, we can look at any alarm settings, any data log settings and any monitor settings also where the wireless is set up and how it's set up. Now you can scroll forward and backwards through these menus, but if we firstly look at the calibration function, we have the option for span calibration. We can set the span cal gas, we can set the span value. We also have the option for a three point calibration. So if I want to perform a span calibration, we hit the enter button, it'll then ask me to apply CAS1. This happens to be isobutylene at 100 parts per million. I have a can of isobutylene here, so I can apply this to the end of the device. Because this is a pumped instrument, I can use an on-demand regulator. And we can see the instrument is now calibrating. Calibration takes around 30 seconds for a full span calibration. So we'll just watch that tick down. We can see the calibration is done and we're getting a reading around 100 ppm. So I can remove the gas and remove the gas. I can change to different calibration gases should I so wish or different span values or as I said perform a three point calibration if you're looking at parts per billion. So if I press the escape button I can come back out. I can look at any measurement settings on the instrument such as measurement units. On this particular instrument we have an option for ppm, milligrams per cubic meter um, and some volume measurements. 
We can also look at some leak rates on this particular device, which is particularly interesting. We can look at measurement gases, current gas library. So these have all the preset correction factors for different gas types, which you can set throughout in the instrument or within the software. We can also create custom gas library, should we so wish. Our alarm settings, we can look at alarm limits that are set on the instrument, such as the high alarm, low alarm, stellar alarm and TWA alarm. We can look at the alarm mode, so whether it's an auto reset or a latch alarm. We can look at um, the alarm settings in terms of can look at the alarm settings in terms of whether the light and buzzer are enabled or disabled. Uh, we can look at adding a comfort beep on the device so every 30 seconds the unit will beep to let you know it's alive and we can also enable or disable a man down alarm with a sensitivity and warning time adjustments. The data log settings we can change we can clear the data log time or change the intervals should we say wish for our purposes we'll make no changes. We can look at the general monitor setup. So changing date and time, any display settings like brightness or contrast, change the pump speed, set the pump stall rate. We have an option for enabling a rolling graph rather than a, just a direct reading on the screen, which I will enable so you can have a look at what that looks like. So to enable the rolling graph, turn it on. And then if we come back out, uh, we have an option for real time data, but that's displayed. I'll turn that on as well. Uh, we can change any language settings. So there are preset languages for English, currently English and Chinese, but there are more languages coming. Self-zeroing, this is our zero at startup. And then we're back to where we began. The wireless settings is just whether you want the Bluetooth enabled or not. And then we're back to where we started. If I want now return to the main measurement criteria, we can see we're now getting a rolling graph as well as our live settings. So if I once again apply some measurement gas, you'll be able to see a nice peak coming up on the graph. So we can see we've got a nice peak on the graph. And if I remove that gas, we can see the alarm is eliminated and a nice peak comes back down. It's a very quick response instrument. So this is particularly good for parts per billion measurements. Now, looking at the Bluetooth side of the instrument and the capabilities we have within uh, the wireless communication, I have already connected on my particular device to this instrument. So if I want to press, this will now connect with our device live via Bluetooth. And I can see I'm now connected to the device. I could download any data logs or, so by pressing the down arrow, I can download any data logs. I can clear the data log settings by pressing that. I don't want to clear the data logs. Again, if I wanted to download, it automatically shuts off the instrument so it's ready to download any data on the instrument. I can cancel this at any time, which I will do. And now I'm back in general operation mode. I can press refresh. And now I'm getting live readings directly from the monitor onto my phone. The limitation on distance is just limited to the length of Bluetooth, and we could have multiple instruments attached at the same time. This is the general um, app software available with the device. Bluetooth comes as standard with all Neo devices. The app itself is free to download from our website and we'll be making links available. So should you require any further assistance or would like to look at the app in more detail, then do let us know. I'll just close that down. Now, getting back to the uh, measurement, the instrument itself, if you want to then turn the instrument off, you can press and hold the off button. Now the unit switched off. Now if we want to look at any in any more detail at the external, we can see we have an external filter fitted as standard on the device. The unit comes with about five or six in the box. These are easily removable, replaceable, and reattachable. And then if we want to get into our sensor section up the top, we unscrew the top section here. And if we can we can see that our PID is positioned right at the front end of the device. So the PID lamp sensor is here and then underneath is our actual lamp itself. So to remove the 
sensor housing is a relatively simple procedure. We just have to lever off the top section being quite careful and then you can pull off and we can see the standard lamp exposed. Um, this, the unit is also supplied with a cleaning kit for cleaning the lamps um, and should you need to do anything but other than that then this section should remain closed. The lamp is right at the front end of operation so it means that you get very very swift response to gases and a very quick clear out downtime unlike some other VOC monitors on the market. And then to reattach the screw into position. So hopefully that gives you a good idea of the NEO's capabilities, an idea of its basic functionality and should you require any further assistance or support then feel free to give us a call on 01489 326 031, email info at safetymonitors.co.uk or you can visit our website at www.safetymonitors.co.uk. Thanks for listening.